With gacha games, it's always good to have a strong start. It allows you to clear content more easily, and the later you clear certain content, the more you will be missing out in terms of resources. Today, I am going to share some tips I picked up during my time in the Chinese server to help you progress through the early game more efficiently and also get you prepared for the future patches. For this video, I will be mainly covering three things. The best starter team with some general team building ideas, the things you should be doing in the early game, and an overview of future banners to plan ahead. Now, before we actually start, I have to make it very clear that the game is not so difficult that the meta team is absolutely required. However, when using less powerful units, your endgame will take twice the thinking and thrice the turns. And with that out of the way, let's start with with how limited resources are in the early game, especially without the help of even shops, it's important to focus on just one team at the beginning and two for the sake of clearing limbo. For team, this game basically spread out into three categories right now. The reality team, the mental teams, and the eternity solo team. Most of you probably already know, the team comps is usually one main DPS, one support, and one healer. For reality team, you can use the following as your main DPS. The best option right now are Centurion, a Knight, Lydia, and Eternity. Some other characters who's more supportive, including Anna Lee, Sotheby, and Kornbloom, can also be used as main DPS, assuming you will be focusing on raising their stats. Even if you do not have any of the buff, as long as you do not have two solid DPS on your account, I recommend you still to race a reality team using Ego as the main carry. You will be able to get a free copy of her at 112, and since she's a 4 star, she's cheaper to race than the other characters. You will likely get a few portraits of her from the gacha alone, and at portrait 4, her ultimate crit boost goes from 40% to 100%. While she will eventually fall off compared to other DPS, especially in terms of survivability, she's one of the best early game carries when you do not have access to Inside 3 due to how much materials it costs. As for support, I suggest Kornbloom, Sonetto, Ali, and Tenet. It really doesn't matter which one you use, they're all pretty solid supports. Now for the mental team, Charlie is unironically the best mental main DPS we have despite being a 5 star. Of course, she will need Portrait 3 to be more consistent with her damage, but she is on the current Sotheby be banner. Drivia 3 and Regulus comes right after for the main DPS slot. Regulus can also be used as a support, along with Baby Blue, and the two more universal support, Sonato and Anan Lee. For healers, there really isn't much options right now. With Sotheby, Madison Pocket, and Bloom Party shared among two teams, if you don't have enough of them, you might need to compromise down using DK, Apple, or La Source as your healer. If you do, you will need to make sure to use the supports like Sonato or Tenet to help with the revivability for endgame content until your team is strong enough. If you got lucky with your beginner banner and was able to get Eternity, she unironically can solo content. This is really helpful in the early game because this allows you to progress through the end of the artificial synabolism surface level, assuming you don't strive for full stars. You can even beat some limbo stages with her, all without the needing for a second healer and support. Overall, for early game, after finishing with your polling, you should look to focus your resources into two DPS of your choice and raise their support as needed. Do not spread your material thin, or your progress could be delayed by quite a bit. For reference, outside of the one I leveled for the beginner test, I only built four units in total, with both of my main DPS at Resonate 9 and the support at Resonate 6. Now that you understand the basic of team building, let's look at some In Reverse 1999, early game is when you do not have access to Inside 3 characters. For a normal player who's not looking to rush too hard, it will take you around 2 weeks or so to farm for a single Inside 3 upgrade. Good thing is that you don't really have to worry about this for the future limited characters, as starting 1.1, every win shop will give you roughly the required material to Inside 3 the first banner units, plus some of the material for the second banner units. The first thing you should look to do in the early game is to get some free reward from the tutorial stage that you can clear for free. This includes a copy of Sonato's Pro Tree and a new tuning site. Now, some of the later stages can be challenging as you will have to play in very specific ways each round, but there are probably already guides somewhere on the internet and if I find one, I'll link it in the pinned comment down below. The wilderness system is also very important, there are a few things you can get out of the system. One, it will increase the bond level of the character you put in it over time. Reaching a certain bond level will unlock character info which give you gems. Two, it will also give you free coins and experience as idle rewards. And three, this is where you craft your important materials for insight and resonance. There are a few things you should be looking to do with Wilderness early. 
First, you should look to raise the main building polio hold to at least level 4. This is the base requirement for unlocking Wishing Spring level 4. Wishing Spring level 4 opens up the recipes for material you need for Inside 3. But do note you also need to clear 413 hard mode to actually unlock those recipes. The second is for bond. Make sure to place down as many characters as possible and switch them out once they hit 100% bond. Otherwise, you're basically leaving out free gems on the table. Last thing is to place down as many tells of the higher quality as possible. In Wilderness, there is a Vigor score which can increase both the general either reward amount and how many characters you can place in the Wilderness at a time. The higher quality tiles will give you more Vigor per tile than the lower one, and you will eventually switch out most of your tiles to the higher tier one as more higher tier tiles get added within each patch. You should also look to place down as many buildings as possible as there doesn't seem to be a cap on how many you can place down as long as there are terrains you can place it on. Now, as for the building upgrade, I do suggest you to put them off for a while until you finish your first two teams. Make sure that you can clear all the game's content, including late stage limbos, before coming back and finishing your wilderness. Talking about limbo, you want to focus on clear surface level artificial somnambulism as soon as possible. You will get tons of first time gems, and more importantly, you will get free material weekly based on how far you have gone through. This materials are used in the resonate of your character and are the key to give them more stats. The later level will lock you out of the characters you used for one stage, which is why you need multiple teams. And once you fully clear the surface level, you will be able to challenge Limbo stages for more reward. You can claim the Dream Dask reward weekly and Limbo resets every 15 days. One last content you should try to push is Sidetube Gram Analysis. This dungeon drops the currency you need to exchange for Sidetubes and also the material you need to level them up. You will get two free entry with bonus reward for this daily and pushing further grants you more fathers to level up with. Stage 7 is very difficult, so don't expect to clear too early. That's pretty much everything I can think of so far for the early game content in patch 1.0. And with that, let's look at I've said this before, every single limited character has been centurion level. But of course, unless you're extremely lucky, you can't pull for every single character. So what are the better banners to pull on? Well, first off, it's important to understand what you're aiming for. Since you get a 30% bonus damage boost for having elemental advantage, you are generally looking to get 4 main DPS for different elements, and also 2 healer and 2 sub DPS. Eventually, you will of course go up to 8 carry since you want both mental and reality DPS for each element, but that would be in far, far future. And with all that in mind, let's look at the banners. For this part, I'm actually going to start with patch 1.2. Patch 1.2 has two of the most impactful units in the game. The first banner for 1.2 is Chang Ling, who is Plant Reality DPS. Her damage against poison enemy is simply ungodly and is capable of both multi-target and single-target fights. Paired with one of the best side tube in the game when activated, which is Blasphemer of Night, she becomes an unstoppable monster. The second banner for 1.2 is Tooth Fairy. She's a very strong healer that is the best in slot for pretty much every single team with a few exceptions. Exceptions. She's able to apply crit resistance reduction and crit defense reduction to enemy every other turn, and more importantly, her confusion is available at skill tier 1 instead of skill tier 2, and her ultimate will also cleanse the entire team on condition it lands you a crit. In my opinion, both of the 1.2 banner are must pulls, which means it's very important to save up enough from 1.0 and 1.1. With that in mind, for patch 1.1's first banner, we have Melania. She is a beast mental damage DPS who focuses on single target burst damage. Her ult has high damage and its damage will scale up each time you use it, until a cap. She also has extra moxie generation built in to allow her to cycle her ultimate quicker. So if you don't have Centaurion who is also a beast DPS, I would consider getting her if possible, but still make sure to consider how much pull and pity you will have ready for 1.2. For the second banner of 1.1, we have Pickle. He is mineral mental damage sub DPS. His skill judgment of the ball will dispel enemy buff, which can be sometimes very handy, and his ultimate, which provides the entire team with damage buff for up to three turns. He also have a passive similar to Regulus that make him better used every other turn. We will have another support unit by 1.3, who also are able to provide similar level of support minus the dispel. Not to mention, 37 will also be introduced in patch 1.4, which is also a sub DPS. So if you really want the doggo, pull for doggo. If not, I highly recommend against it. The first banner for patch 1.3, Shaman. One thing going for him is that he can ult quite often due to the passive, which basically provides him moxie in a different way. And his defense reduction works on both mental and physical defense, which allow him to be placed more flexible in both sides of the teams. At this point, if you already have a solid team, I would suggest going for him, as he is in general a better support than the one we have on release. The second half banner is Black Dwarf, a very strong mineral mental DPS with a powerful inside 3 that basically grants her a free tier 3 attack whenever she uses her ultimate. 
At this point, the only real solid DPS we have going for Mineral is Eternity, and maybe Pickle if you build him that way. And Eternity DPS is really not as top tier as the limited banners we have, so you can consider picking her up if you really want to increase the power of your Mineral team. But again though, I suggest that you get your hand on two healer and the DPS for each item first before spreading out to pull other stuff. As a final word for this section, I want to remind you that playing meta is not necessary in this game, and you will also not miss out on limited character completely by skipping them. We currently do not have true limited units, and our current limited unit will join standard banner after 3 patches. For example, Melania and Pickle from patch 1.1 will be added to the game after patch 1.4. Anywho, that's all I have to share for this video. If you have any questions, you can come over to my streams at my Twitch channel or right here on YouTube. This has been SteamBunX, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.